When I was uh, studying for the priesthood, I had a crush on an older woman. Yeah. I had a crush on an older woman. She had these lovely dark eyes, lovely skin, and uh, a velvet voice. Her name was Gloria Estefan of the Miami Sound Machine. Oh, there she is. Gloria, please. Please. Anyway, Gloria. Um, every time Gloria sang, I felt that she was singing to me. Yeah. And, um, but during the years and during the time and during the months, it kind of like, the dream kind of faded quickly. You know, I kept saying, like, it's not, it's not you, Gloria, it's me. <laughs> but one of her songs, anyway, get away from that. One of her songs, one of her songs, which actually wasn't uh, that good a song, uh, but it had a strong title. And uh, I'll never forget the title. It was called, We Seal Our Fate With the Choices We Make. We Seal Our Fate With the Choices We Make. It's a very fast number, but... Today's gospel kind of drew me back to that. The two sons made different choices, and these choices, in a sense, sealed their fate. The first son in that parable said to his dad, he will not go, but later he regrets his refusal, and he goes to work. And he represents the tax collectors and the prostitutes who refuse to obey God's commandments. But after they listened to John the Baptist. And after they listened to Jesus, they repented. They said, hold, hold on a second, we're not living according to the gospel of Jesus, this good news. And they turned around. Repentance means turned around. And they became eligible for eternal reward. The second son says that he will go but does not, and he represents the chief priests and the Pharisees and the elders and the scribes by their pride, their pride, and their refusal to obey God's call to repentance through John the Baptist and through Jesus. These so-called religious people excluded themselves. They excluded themselves from eternal reward. They sealed their fate by their stubbornness of heart. I mentioned the third option because he had two options there. There's a third option. And the third option would be to accept the Father's orders with grace and respect, without question, and carry them out, just like Jesus did. Jesus did to the Father, and he died for us. The only sign of belonging to the kingdom is faithfulness to the will of God. But the religious leaders were not able, were not ready, to admit their need for repentance. I don't sin. I haven't sinned. I'm a good person. They were stubborn. And therefore they rejected John the Baptist. They rejected our Lord and their call for repentance. I mean, Jesus came. John the Baptist said one of his first his, his driving words was repent. And Jesus, when he, he came, one of his motivational driving words was repent. And earlier on in that, that particular um, gospel of Matthew in chapter 7, Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father in heaven, who does the will of my Father. So we can say, Lord, Lord, sing hallelujah to the Lord. But our hearts are not there. So it's getting the praise and the action together to move as one unit. The life-saving difference between the two sons was the fact that one had the good sense to remember the love of the father. And so he turned from evil and decided to do what was right. In today's world, the first son who made the U-turn, the faithful son, has another face. He has the face of the repentant alcoholic, or the face of the repentant drug addict. 
Once they come to know Jesus, they turn around. At the start, their lives were, no, 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 God, no, no, I don't believe in God, no, no. But once God touches, once Jesus touches their hearts, they turn around, they repent. It also has the face of a church that reaches out to the needy and its community. It also has the face of a priest who calls parishioners to repentance and a young person who decides to remain pure until marriage and a generous parishioner, a person who gives, gives, gives of their time and their talent and their treasure. All people who sacrifice a lot to obey Christ, they are the first son. And the second son is now the person who goes to mass but refuses to let Jesus, refuses to let the gospel into his or her heart into his or her life and gossips about other people. There's many people who go to Mass regularly, who say prayers regularly, but their hearts are closed, their hearts are blocked. And the second son also represents a baptized Christian who refuses to obey Christ in the sensitive areas of sex, money, and power. And the second son also represents a priest whose homily is designed to please people rather than to please God. And the second son represents a church that ignores issues of justice and mercy. The second son represents a Catholic school that neglects to teach children about the gospel of Jesus Christ and teaches all kinds of new age practices. In short, brothers and sisters, all people who appear to be faithful but deep down are not. All they are are good, decent pagans. Not disciples of Jesus Christ, no. Good, decent pagans. Ireland is full of good, decent pagans. So my friends, no more flimsy excuses to try to silence our conscience like, I didn't realize how sinful I was, or I was just too busy with work and family and, uh, you know, a decent social life to have any time for weekend mass. Or God ought to be happy that I'm going to mass in odd time, not like my friends who never go. Or my parents don't go to mass, so why should I? Or I don't want to be different like every, everybody else. You know, I don't want to be different. You know, people think I'm silly or stupid. I meant to turn around... I meant to turn my life around ages ago, but you know, it just hasn't happened yet, but it will. These brothers and sisters are not valid excuses at the judgment seat of God, no. So if we have been disobedient to God in our past life, we need to knock, knock on the door of God's mercy today. Today, don't wait until tomorrow or the next day. I'll have a good time today and tonight, I'll have a few drinks, I'll sure have more than a few drinks, I'll just, have, I'll just go bad, you know, and wait, wait for an, another few days. No, now is the time. We need to remember that, that what God in his mercy did for the tax collectors and the prostitutes in the parable, and he did to Matthew the tax collector, the apostle, Simon the zealot, the terrorist that he called, and St. Augustine who was a bit of a womanizer, and the millions of unknown sinners who are now saints in heaven. He did that for them. He can do that for us. He will do that for us. If we repent. If we repent of our past sins and renew our lives like the first son in the parable did. It is never too late, brothers and sisters. Never too late for us to be transformed. We now offer the sacrament of reconciliation at one o'clock every Sunday. Every Sunday, one o'clock. And we're offering the sacrament of reconciliation before the tritium this evening from half past five to half past seven. Two hours, two hours we're offering that space. And you might think, well, it's not very convenient. I mean, one o'clock, it's not very convenient. You know, lunchtime, da 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 da. Well, brothers and sisters, it's time to prioritize. It's time to make it convenient. My belly or my soul, yeah? My belly or my soul. 
make it convenient. Because as Gloria sang, we seal our fate with the choices we make. And I bet heaven is full of repentant sinners. Full of repentant sinners. And if we get there, please God we will, there will be some surprises. It's like the following poem by um, Taylor Ludwig called Heavenly Surprise. Listen to this. I was shocked, confused, bewildered as I entered heaven's door. Not by the beauty of it all, nor the lights or its decor. But it was the folks in heaven who made me splutter and gasp. The thieves, the liars, the sinners, the alcoholics, and the trash. There stood the kid from primary school who swiped my lunch money twice. Next to him was my old neighbor who never said anything nice. And there's Mick. I thought he was rotting away in hell. Was sitting pretty on a cloud nine, looking incredibly well. I nudged Jesus. What's the deal? I would love to hear your take. How all these sinners get up here, God must have made a mistake. And why is everyone so quiet, so somber? Give me a clue. Child, said Jesus, they're all in shock. They never thought they'd be seen. <laughs> you. <laughs> so, brothers and sisters, repent, 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 and believe the good news. Amen.